Hello, everybody. I didn't talk much about materials in the old version of Unity because I knew the new version of Unity would have different materials. Eh, it's out, so let's go ahead and talk about them. I want everyone to feel comfortable creating materials, so we're going to go ahead and create some materials here, go over how they're created, and I want you to feel very, very comfortable in creating your own. The important thing is actually less the actual texture map and more understanding how materials work, so we're going to go over that today. Let's start with this tunic texture I've created. The tunic texture has an albedo map. This is the same as a diffuse map, they just changed the name. I'm not a big fan of albedo since it is how much sunlight reflects off of planets. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, and it's probably better than diffuse. Either way, the new albedo map uh, is the same as the old diffuse map and you can tint it in the same way as ever. There's a new uh, system called the Metallic and the Smoothness uh, system here. The, this, these are independent of each other. The Metallic doesn't appear to do anything useful if you don't know how to use it. So don't get, too, um, don't get obsessed over using the Metallic system. You can generally get along fine without it. If you do want to use it, you're going to have to look up a, a, an advanced tutorial on that subject. The Smoothness, however, you should really get used to. We'll go over it in detail a little bit later. But for this particular tunic, the smoothness of zero is correct. We've got a normal map. One of the cool features is that you can now change how the normal map is applied without changing the import settings on, on the normal map. That's good because this normal map, when you invert it, it looks like burlap. And when you do it normal, it looks like a pillowy kind of uh, uh, cotton stitched system. So I can use the same file both ways. I added also a secondary map. I don't know whether you can see it on YouTube, it's the same exact normal map, but I've scaled it differently, tiled it differently, and it adds a little bit of asymmetrical noise uh, to an otherwise very, very symmetrical surface, and I kind of like it like that. And that's a very basic and simple way to create a new material. You use a new standard shader and just fill in the albedo in the normal map, just like before. The big advantage of this system is that it has a secondary map that you can add in to add whatever kind of... Uh, uh, details or, or second layer you'd like, and it also has a normal map scaling so that you can change how the normal map is applied, and it has the new smoothness system. Now what value is a new smoothness system? Well, let's take a look at the belt. This is a very, very primitive belt. Uh, I'm not going to leave it like this, but you can see that it is uh, vaguely the right kind of material. But I've got the smoothness way, way up. Well, if we bring the smoothness down, and we start to bring it up, you can see how that changes. It has several different stages it walks through. One thing worth noting is that at low levels, it actually just brings up the rim light. You look on the left side there, you can see the rim light coming into existence. So you can use that to get a little bit of rim lighting. Now what would you ever want rim lighting for? Well, let's go down to the pants. The pants are just the same as a tunic in that they have a, an albedo map and a normal map but you notice that their smoothness is not at zero. Why is that? Well, in most of these games, there is a certain amount of um, darkness that's allowed, and the, the ambient lighting fills in. So if I were to bring the smoothness down to zero, you can see that back here in the dark area, there is no distinction between the legs. I can't see what's going on. So what I do is I use a little bit of smoothness to bring in rim lighting. See? and now you can distinguish between the two legs because the rim lighting helps you. It also makes it look a little bit softer uh, and a little bit more like there is some subsurface scattering so it's a little bit nice. Um, you don't want to use it for everything, it can make stuff look cartoony. It's invaluable for something like pants. Let's look at the boots. These boots are a mess. I mean they look awful. How can we make them look a little bit better? Well the boots always have looked awful but let's go ahead and just uh, take a little bit of a close look and try and fix them up just a touch here. So just like before, I've got the standard and I've got the albedo and I've got the normal map. How can I make them look less awful? Well, I've moved the smoothness up. If I bring the smoothness down, it doesn't actually look bad, but those certainly don't look like metal plates. And as I bring the surface, as I bring the smoothness up, they start to look like they're made out of plastic rather than leather. Well, one of the things you can do is you can try to apply a metallic map so we could say pick the boot differential as the metallic map, but you can see that we're not given any sliders or anything, so we'd actually have to be pretty good at this in order to get it to be the right 
kind of metallic stuff. We'd have to nitpickily design the metallic map just perfectly in an image editor, and that's a lot of extra effort that we don't really want to go through. So we could just increase the metallic level, uh, and that actually doesn't look too bad. It certainly stops it from looking like total crap, but it's still not look very good. So let's go ahead and switch from standard to standard specular. Now the specular system is uh, nice in some ways and bad in others, but in this case it's good because we can set up a specular map. Here is our boot specular map. Now you can see that what that does is it makes certain parts of the boot look super super shiny and other parts not look shiny at all. The problem with this is that it actually washes out the colors and you can see here this just looks like it's made out of silver but it's not. If we click back over here to none it's actually a bright green gem. What's going on? Well this specular map has white and white means 100 percent specular it's not telling us how much smoothness is in any given part. It's telling us flat out this is how specular the area should be. So that's also not terribly useful now, is it? Well, there are some other things we could try and do. Uh, using a metallic map is, in fact, the right option. We just don't have the right metallic map for the job. If we try this boot specular thing, this metallic map actually makes our metal parts just black as pitch. And that's because metallic works in a very different way. I'm not going to try and force that. I'm not going to try and make that work out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it like this. And I think that that's probably good enough for now. We'll deal with this later. Hmm, interesting. I think it might look a little bit better with a negative normal map. Well, either way, let's move on to another texture, or sorry, another material. Let's move on to the hair. Now, as you might remember in the old game, the hair had a problem where it would not layer correctly and you couldn't cast shadows on it. So if you walked into the dark, your hair would glow. And your hair would always look a little bit odd. So I can show you that by simply um, panning back and forth and you can see how the fronds kind of pop in and out awkwardly. And that's because they add together, uh, their z-sorting is pretty bad, so sometimes some of the fronds are in front and sometimes they're behind in really awkward ways. Previously, that was more or less our best op option. You could do some other stuff, but it was always really awkward. Well, now they have the option to do cutouts. Now, cutout is, it was available before, but it was not, not as easy to use. Uh, and cutouts actually make it so that the system is solid up until it cuts out entirely. And in this way, there's never any weird glitching because all of the fronds are actually considered solid. The problem with cutout, of course, is that these sharp edges are just awful. Now, presumably, you could use some, uh, some camera space uh, shading or something like that. I think what I would like to do is uh, have a... Um, a slightly different approach, but I think that this would work. This cutout is quite nice, and you can adjust the actual level that they cut off at to give you a different amount of scraggliness. The question here is finding hair textures that are amenable to cutouts, because right now almost all the hair textures are fade rather than cutout. So I'm going to work on that. I'm going to find some new hair textures that can do the cutoff like that. Uh, and that'll work out if I can find them. If not, I'll have to make some. Either way, uh, the hair can now be done in a way which no longer fades into itself, no longer screws up, and gets shaded correct. Excuse me, gets shaded correctly. That'll be nice. And as with the pants, I put in. Or sorry, as with the tunic, I put in some extra detail work here. Obviously, I'm going to have to change the texture. That's not, not a very good texture for this, because it's got light at the roots and dark at the top. You can play around with trying to make it look good by changing how metallic and how smooth and all that stuff. Well, whatever. The last big material I wanted to talk about was the skin. Skin is actually kind of a bogeyman. It's tough. 
Skin, there is nothing more complex than skin. Right now we're working with this standard shader skin. Nope, that's the shader forge. Why is it called skin shader forge? Even though it's clearly skin unity. Well, whatever. Uh, this is the unity skin, and it uses the standard unity uh, shader. And I've just set it to be more or less the right color, and I haven't done anything else to it. Let's go ahead and see whether we can turn this into something decent. First thing we want to do is pick out some soft noise. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Where's our soft noise? Let's just select it from the material from the uh, asset pack here. Gentle. That's what the problem is. It's gentle static, not soft noise. And the gentle static normal. And we'll do the gentle static normal down here as well. Now you can see that that actually. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on YouTube. I'm trying to get. It's not really behaving with its speed here. Uh, come on. There. So you can see that that's produced some patchiness on the surface of the skin. That's probably too much patchiness. Let's go ahead and modify it so that it looks a little bit less bad. And now there, that's barely visible, and it's just about right. Now obviously we should create actual textures for the face and so on and so forth, but just as a templating system, this works pretty well. You just put, slap in some soft noise and adjust it until it looks decent. Uh, one of the things we would like to do is we would like to get this skin to look less like, uh, I don't know, whatever it looks like now, it doesn't look like skin. By increasing the smoothness, you can change how the skin looks. So here you can see uh, it, it looks like made out of some kind of wet plastic. But as we bring it down, we can get it to just a little bit of highlight like this, just a little bit of definition, and it starts to look good. Moreover, it's got a little bit of rim lighting to it so that it looks a little bit decent. But it's not really very good. Um, this material system was never really intended to be used for skin. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that they, they did intend to use it for skin, but it's not um, not really suitable for skin. It's got a lot of plasticity. It's really more of a plastic metal thing rather than a skin thing. You'd have to really work at it to make it work for skin. Well, the answer to that is to use a different kind of shader. And instead of using the Unity Standard Shader, we'll use this Shader Forge Shader, which appears to have had its settings reverted. Um, let's go ahead and... There we are. Let's go ahead and bring our transmission down. There we are. That's more like it. So this is the same basic skin, except that I have made it a material in Shader Forge instead of in Unity. And you might be wondering what the big difference is. Well, let's go ahead and swap between the two again here. So this is quite bright. Let's go ahead and lower the brightness just so that it will look roughly the same. So you can see that the Unity 1 is shinier. But we can adjust that, right? We can make it less shiny. What we can't do is add in the subsurface scattering. Now, admittedly, this isn't real subsurface scattering. The Shader Forge actually uses a light wrap color system, very similar to the edge light that we saw with our uh, pants. But this light wrap is a lot more customizable. It's a lot more powerful. We can customize the color, and we can customize how much. So, for example, if we turn that way up, we actually get this sort of uh, uh, slightly demonic look. And if we bring it to negative, we can actually turn her blue. And you can adjust the color to make it look as light or as cold as you'd like it to look. So there's a lot of options for you to customize that allow you to get a lot of um, nice subsurface look out of your shaders. Now you might be wondering, what am I talking about? Subsurface, blah, 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 blah. Let's go ahead and take this directional light and make it so that it's no longer more or less straight on. And then let's zoom in on the hero again. Oh man, I cannot control anything today. My mouse is just not behaving. Sorry. So what you can see here is 
it lights up in a very different way depending on uh, how much transmission you've got and basically it determines how much light gets pushed through the surface and into the mass of the body and it makes it look a lot softer and a lot more realistic eh, unless you set it too high at which point it starts to look like those cheap plastic balls you buy from uh, vending machines and throw against the ground super balls also instead of using smoothness we're using roughness so if we bring our roughness down you can see that we get some very very glistening looks but roughness actually serves a pretty good um, uh, it's, it's actually better than smoothness when you're thinking about it for skin, in my opinion. And you can see that it actually brings this bright pink look. That's the highlight color. And so uh, we can change that however we would like. I put in just a touch of blue because I'd like it to look uh, a little bit realistic. It's purpley. And the brightness just adjusts how bright the skin is in general. And I found that this was required due to the complexity of the interaction between the light wrap and the highlight color and all that stuff. So. This sort of thing is not that hard to make in Shader Forge, but it's impossible to do using the default Unity system. Now, I'm not going to say you should go buy Shader Forge because I think it's like a hundred bucks. It's not cheap, but uh, just to show you, this is not a complicated Shader Forge material. It's just basically plugging in some values, and it looks a lot better than the Unity skin does, in my opinion. You might be able to get the Unity skin to look equally good. I just haven't haven't been able to. No, I can't can't quite manage it. Well, whatever. It's a kind of cartoony skin, but I did it on purpose. Uh, so that's it for materials. I would really like everyone to be very, very comfortable creating materials because they really add a lot to your game. This is especially true if you can control the camera. If someone was going to zoom in on this character, uh, from out here, you can't see anything, right? It's just, it's just a flat color system. But as you zoom in, you can start to see the details of the texture. And even though I haven't really done anything impressive with this texture, I haven't really painted it to be specifically this character, it does have a little bit of a mottled tone to it, and that adds a lot when you can see that the skin has some texture to it, even if there's nothing else, uh, you know, even if it hasn't been painted correctly to look like uh, correct skin. There's no freckles or anything, for example. Either way, uh, this kind of rambled on a little bit long, but I hope you understand the basic idea, and I hope you feel more comfortable with the concept of skin. And materials. Materials, not skin. I haven't had any coffee yet. I'm going to go have a coffee.